Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Thunderbirds, the game of international rescue, which, in case you didn't know, is based on a very, very well-beloved TV series from the 1960s called Thunderbirds. And I'm not really going to go much into the history of the show other than to say that you know, it's celebrating its 50th anniversary now. And to commemorate that, there is a new board game that's on Kickstarter right now that you might want to think about backing from designer Matt Leacock, the same designer as Pandemic, which as you may or may not know, is Jen's and my favorite cooperative game of all time. And now this is a cooperative game where players take on the role of various members of the Tracy family as they run all around the world trying to save various people from all kinds of troubles because that's what they do. Now, I should say before I get started, in case it isn't obvious, this is very much a prototype. These are really, really rough and ready components that I don't think really represent anything like what the final shipping game will look like. I mean, obviously you'll have nice looking cards instead of, you know, just cards, pieces of paper that I've slipped into card slips and all that. There'll be a nice pretty board. Uh, huge importance is the player pieces, you know, all the different ships that the Tracy family moves around in, Thunderbird 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, will not be the simple acrylic two-dimensional pieces. In fact, actually, I t I've got a picture of them here. I'll show you what they look like in the real game. They're actually full 3D model things with still the little holes on them so that you can put the pegs in them as I'm going to be demonstrating right now because all the members of the Tracy family can hop from one ship to another quite a bit over the course of the game. And then I guess you could actually you know, use this cover to kind of get a feel for what the actual art of the game might look like. So just bear that in mind. Everything you're seeing here is very rough and Ready, but you can go to the Kickstarter page and get a better idea of what the final product is going to look like. Okay, so let's get going. Now I'm going to be doing a two-player run through today, and randomly I ended up being Virgil Tracy, the master of land rescues, and Jen will be Gordon Tra Tracy, who specializes in sea rescues. And we could have been Alan, Scott, John, or John Tracy, or Lady Penelope, the secret agent up here in London. And now, even though Jen is the, the uh, Gordon, the yellow pawn, and I am green, the Virgil, the green pawn, you can see here I am in Thunderbird 2, the, the big cargo transport ship. And let's see, where is Jen? Oh, yeah, she's over here in Thunderbird 4, the aquatic ship. All of the characters are in the game, no matter how many players are playing. You know, this is a one, two, three, or four player game. So, um, who are the other ones? Uh, John Tracy, up here in Thunderbird 5 in geostationary orbit. Uh, over the South Pacific, over Tracy Island. He's up here in the satellite, waiting to help out. Scott Tracy is over here in Thunderbird 1, the jet that zips all over the place. Alan Tracy is over here at, which one is this? Thunderbird 3, the rocket, the, whose sole purpose is basically to travel from the surface, from Tracy Island, up into geostationary orbit, and then can go to the moon, or Mars, or asteroid belt, or Venus, Mercury, or the sun, even. By the way, did I mention the Thunderbirds is set in um, 2060? So this is the far-flung future where they've got access to all this really great technology and this rich family basically uses their wealth and technological advancements to save people because that's just who they are. So all of the family members are in here, but Jen and I will only directly be controlling Virgil and Gordon. But we will get help from the other family members as well and uh, Lady Penelope over here in England. Right, so that's who we are, and right at the beginning of the game, three missions have been drawn, and I should say, for fans of the show, my understanding is most of these missions are actually based on episodes from the classic show. Ricochet, City of Fire, and the Mineral Eaters are the three that came out randomly, and you can see there's a whole deck that are still going to be coming, and these... Are, you know, these are basically a bunch of emergencies and disasters and situations that we have to jet all over the world and outer space to try to save people from. Now, this is what we're going to be focusing on primarily, but our real goal is to stop the evil Hood, who is the, the main antagonist, the villain uh, that the uh, Thunderbirds are always having to deal with. And he has a big mastermind plan in, in place, which has three stages that have to be done. If he completes all three of these, we lose if the Hood is successful. And basically, the Hood, over time, at various points in the game, moves forward on his little track. When he hits these purple spaces, he causes very various nefarious terrible things to happen when he hits these spots and um, if he ever hits these spots and we have not taken care of step one 
three or four, then we instantly lose. Now, I should say, I'm going to be playing on epic difficulty level today because I've got a level 1, a 3, and a 4. If I wanted to play on normal, I'd have a 1, 2, and a 3. Um, or a 1, 2, and a 4. No, I see. Easy is a 1, 2, 3. Normal is a 1, 2, 4. Epic is a 1, 3, 4. And Legendary is a 2, 3, 4. So I'm playing at a tough difficulty level because obviously the higher the, you know, these, you know, the higher the number of these various plots, the tougher they are going to be to defeat. Now at the beginning of the game, I get to we get to have an advanced peek at what the first one's going to be. And let's see. Now, of course, this is all placeholder stuff. So there's a title, there'll be flavor text, there'll be images, whatever. But basically, this is what the hood, hood is planning. And to stop him, we, um, you know, Jen and I have to coordinate to spend one persistence, one intelligence, one ingenuity, and one courage in geostationary orbit. These are the these are four of the six resources we can collect by completing various rescue missions all over the place. You can see if we complete this ricochet mission, we'll get some courage and some uh, technology. If we complete the the mineral leaders, we'll get some courage. If we complete City of Fire, we can get. Um, any of the ones we want. And to thwart the hood, we have to get one of each of these icons and get them up into this space, geosynchronous orbit, geostationary orbit. So, and um, we've got some time to do it, but if the hood makes it all the way up here and we haven't done that, we lose. We also lose because over time, these missions, if we don't get them done, if we don't save these people, they move further and further to the right. And if they ever hit this space over here, we instantly lose because we've taken too long and we fail to save people. And then finally, we can lose if this deck runs out. If we don't stop the hood before this deck runs out, then we've run out of time. So those are three ways we can lose. The only way we can win is, well, try and stay ahead of all the various disasters all around the world while dealing with this. Once this is completed, we'll find find out what this is. Once this is completed, we'll find out what this is. If we complete that, we win the game. So that's the big picture. That's the goal. Let's start doing it. I will be the first player, Virgil. And let's see. Now, on your turn, you get to do three actions. And there's a little uh, nice summary card right here. Those actions are you can move, you can rescue, which means you can attempt to solve one of these crises, or you can do research, which means you get a FAB card, an FAB card that can be a really, really powerful help. Um, but if you spend time doing research, then the hood moves forward one step because you're not, you know, you know he, he's getting a chance to move ahead on his plans because you're stopping to do research yourself. So you get to do, I mean, so I could just move three times. I could rest, move three, two times and rescue once, however it goes. But it's my turn. Virgil Tracy is going to do three actions now. Now, um, in addition to those core actions of moving, rescuing, and researching, there's a couple of other actions. You can scout if you are in Thunderbird 1, the blue plane, and you can scan if you are in Thunderbird 5, the satellite in orbit. Now, right now, I'm, I'm in Thunderbird 2, so I cannot do either of I can't scout, nor can I scan. But if I wanted, I could hop out of Thunderbird 2, jump into Thunderbird 1, and then I could do some scouting if I wanted as an example. But let's see. Because at any given time, for free, it doesn't require an action, you can move the different family members from one ship to another. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted to, I could say, hey, um, Alan, jump over here and follow me. And, you know, and so basically, I could move the Alan Peg from Thunderbird 3 into Thunderbird 2, and then I could, I could fly around the world and take Alan with me. So that's a big thing you spend a lot of time doing is managing logistics, trying to get the right family members into the right zones on the board so that they can help you out completing these objectives. Because like I said, if we don't, if we do, we get rewards, which will help us fight the hood. And if we don't, they'll keep on advancing until we lose. So what am I going to do? I've got three actions. Well, if we look at the problems that are facing us right now, Ricochet is a rescue that has to happen in space. Virgil, me, I am particularly strong at land rescue. So I think it's probably more important that I come over here to City of Fire, which I have to get to North America, and I can do a land rescue. That means when I attempt to do it, I get to add two to my roll because we spend a lot of time rolling dice to complete these rescues in the game and trying to rescue. And I, I'm so I'm really the best man for the job to do this City of Fire. And now what else is? So I got to get to North America to do it. And if I happen to have Firefly, which is one of our extra little pod vehicles, you can see there's a whole bunch of vehicles that we can build over the course of the game. The transmitter truck, the mobile crane, the laser cutter, the thunderizer. Here's the Firefly. If we get these built, 
they um, come from the brain's notebook into our pod bay where we can actually put them onto Thunderbird 2 and carry them around to various places in the world. Now, we don't have Firefly right yet, but at the beginning of the game, the mole is already built. So, I, and now this is another action you can do for free. You can basically transfer stuff in a given area for free. I'm going to move um, from Thunder, um, uh, Thunderbird pod bay to Thunderbird 2, the mole. Now, that was a free action. So, now my first of the actual actions I'm going to do is, I am going to move. Thunderbird 2, which is what I'm in, can move up to two spaces in a move action. So, although I'm only going to move one, I'm going to fly from the South Pacific over here to North America. I've finished my move action, so that was my first of three actions. My second of three actions is, I am going to attempt to solve this crisis. Rescue the Carter family from the burning Thompson Tower, Maximal. All right, and so whenever you attempt to solve one of these missions, you have to roll both dice and you have to hit the or hit or beat the difficulty number. So I've got to beat, I've got to hit or beat an eight. And now remember, because this is a land rescue and Virgil is good at land rescues. That means I get plus two. So whatever I roll, I get to add two to it to try and beat the eight. Or alternatively, you can think of it, I'm trying to beat a six because I already have plus two. But also, because the mole is in North America, I'll just go on ahead and deploy the mole here. Because again, you can move stuff on and off of Thunderbird 2 or move characters from one ship to another for free. So the mole is in North America. So that adds plus three. So really, I have plus two, plus three. I have plus five. So I'm very, very likely to be able to hit this eight. But let's go on ahead and give it a try. So my first action was I moved. My second action is I'm going to roll these dice. And what I'm hoping is that I don't roll... Actually, I should say, these dice are one to five. They don't have a six. Instead of a six, this is the icon for the hood. We do not want to roll this because that means he gets to move forward on his dastardly plans. So I'm just trying to roll. If I... Uh, see, all I need to do is get a three. As long as I don't roll snake eyes, I'm going to be fine. And I didn't. I got an eight and an eight. So that's eight plus two for my basic value, plus three more for having the mole there is, um, what, 13. 13 beats an eight pretty handily, and I have done it. We have completed the rescue mission, City on Fire. And our and so it goes into the discard pile. Our reward is, well, one of the, any of the five resources we want. Now, I can see that we're going to get, um, what's it called, technology and courage over here. And we're going to get courage over here. So, you know, I think I'll take an ingenuity. All right, and so Virgil now has some ingenuity. Now, I can use this, I can hold on to this, because remember, we're going to need to spend ingenuity in geostationary uh, orbit to defeat the Hood's plans, or anytime I want for free, I can use these tokens. Now, ingenuity, there's a little cheat sheet right here on the other side of the player thing. Ingenuity basically lets you draw a fab card at any time. Remember, normally, one of the actions I can do is I can research, and that lets me draw a fab card, but it also moves the hood forward. If I use this, I get to do research without, you know, and get a fab card without moving the hood forward. So I could use that, but for now, I think I'm going to hold on to it and save it so that we can finish this mission. But, you know, if we're really getting in trouble, I might decide to draw a fab card that might help us out. Okay, so I've got the reward. Now, that was my second action. I still have one more action. And let's see here. Now, what else am I going to do? I think I'm going to put the mole back on because there's no reason to leave. I could fly away and leave the mole in North America, but I'll put it back on in case I'm going to fly away. Now, what else do I want to do? Let's see. I could move and come back here to the South Pacific and start, you know, transferring stuff around from uh, ship to ship, um, you know, or from from yeah, from Thunderbird to Thunderbird. Now, on Jen's turn, she is Gordon Tracy. She's particularly good at sea rescues. There are no. There's an errand here, which uh, me, which doesn't have a difficulty. We just have to achieve it. We have to get who is this? Alan and um, John to the asteroid belt to complete the mineral eater's errand. But the ricochet is in space. So right now, nobody is particularly good at. There are no sea rescues. So Gordon doesn't have any special powers at the ready. But you know, I think even still, on Gordon's turn, he's probably going to go into space. He's probably going to have to transfer off of Thunderbird 4 to Thunderbird 3 so he can fly into space to deal with this ricochet. Because really, neither Virgil nor Gordon are good at this. But I think on my turn, you know what? For my third action, I am going to draw a fab card. I'm not going to use my ingenuity. I'm saving that for the mission. So instead, I will get to draw an FAB card. I have no idea what FAB stands for, by the way. But I'm going to draw one, and it is an undersea, an undersea ceiling unit. Add plus three to any sea rescue. All right, so that means now both of us 
are um, good at sea rescues. Or actually, the interesting thing is, most of these fab cards you can play at any time. Play before rolling um, for any rescue. So if Jen's attempting a sea rescue, I could play it and supplement her sea power. So anyway, so hopefully some sea missions come up because that's what we're really good at right now. So. But because I did some research and I found the underwater sealing unit, the hood has moved forward one and he's closer to doing whatever this is. And now that was it. That was my turn. I moved, I attempted a rescue and succeeded, and then I did some research. Now it is Jen's turn. You give the dice to whoever's turn it is, and now what is she going to do? Well, let's see. Oh wait, oh no, no, there's one more thing. At the end of your turn, after you've done all your three actions, time moves forward. And what that means is you draw another mission from the mission deck. Let's see, it's Martian Rescue. So we have another problem in space. And then every single other card moves forward one. And so at the end of your turn, these cards are always marching towards failure. So you have to bear that in mind. And so now we've got um, Ricochet in space and also Martian Rescue. And wow, we've got a lot of issues that have to be taken care of in space. Space! Although interestingly, the Martian Rescue, it'll help if Gordon goes along, and wouldn't you know, Jen happens to be Gordon, so that's pretty handy. So I think we're going to be spending some time in space because totally randomly we've gotten a bunch of space missions. All right, so that was the end of my turn as Virgil. And now it is Jen's turn as Gordon. She also has three actions she can do. Now, um, the only way to get from Earth, you know, you can use um, any of, you know, here's Fab, Fab 1, which Lady Penelope starts out in, uh, Thunderbird 1, which Scott starts in, uh, Thunderbird 4, which Jen Gordon starts in, and Thunderbird 3, which Alan starts in. Now, um, all of these ships, except for Thund Thunderbird 3, can only travel along the orange line. So really, Thunderbird 3 is the only way to get up into space. The other ships can, uh, can just move around to all the various hotspots, to Asia, the Indian Ocean, North Atlantic, wherever. So I think the first thing Gordon is going to do is he's going to... Oh, you know what? Actually, the first thing Gordon is going to do is he's going to use his special ability. Once per turn, you may spend one of your actions, remember you only have three, to draw a, a, a persistence token if you're in Thunderbird 4. Now, Gordon is in Thunderbird 4 right now. So I think Jen is first of her three actions is she's going to use her special power and get some persistence. All right. Now, actually, Virgil has the same thing. He could have used one of his actions because he's in Thunderbird 2 to get some technology. But he didn't do that because, really, we're going to get some technology up here in Ricochet. But right now, we really didn't have any other way to get persistence because we didn't know what this was going to be. All right. So first, Jen, Jen used her special power. Second action. Well, before she does her second action, she is going to jump ship. She's going to jump over here from Thunderbird 4 into Thunderbird 3. And so now, Jen is control of Thunderbird 3. And she's about to blast off into space. And you know what else? Before she goes, she's going to transfer Scott off of Thunderbird 1 into Thunderbird 3 as well. And now you can see Thunderbird 3 is full. It's got no more spaces. And remember, you got to remember, Thunderbird 3 is really going to look like this. You know, a freestanding rocket with all the pegs around its base. So it's going to be very, very cool. But yeah, again, just, just wanted to remind you that. So um, now that didn't take any actions. That was free. We're still about to do our second move. And now for our second move, let's see. We will fly. Now, Thunderbird 3 can move up to three spaces when it does a move, but it's only going to move one. It's going to move one. Now, it could keep going. It could go um, you know, two, three, and it would almost make it to the asteroid belt, but not quite. Or it could go two, let's see, it could, um, it could go two, three. It could make it to Mars, where we have to do the Martian rescue. But here's the problem. We would be doing better at the Mar Martian rescue Oh, actually, no, that's actually perfect. Let's do this. So, um, so Jen's first action was she used her power. Her second action was she, after transferring people around for free, her second action was she's going to move. She gets to move up to three spaces. One, two, three. She has flown to Mars, where um, we need to do a Martian rescue. And now her third action is she is going to try to complete this, this rescue on Mars. Now, Gordon is better at sea rescue, so he doesn't have any implicit. And we, let's see, we have to beat a ten, so this is a tougher one. Um, you know, they can get even higher, like you know, elevens and twelves. I don't remember if there's a thirteen or not, but they can get higher. But ten isn't easy, particularly because remember these dice they only go from one to five, so um, you, you can't get a, a an eleven or a twelve with them. So. 
Now, Gordon, uh, Gordon um, is at Sea Rescue, so he doesn't, isn't good at Space Rescues, but interestingly, the Martian Rescue, uh, Rescue Zero X Martian, X, Rescue the Zero X Martian Explore, Exploration Vehicle from the Martian Rock Snakes. Okay, that's good. Gordon, by being here, gets plus three. So this must have something to do with water, or this must be, you know, some of the water on Mars, because he's already getting plus three to this role. And John, who is on Thunderbird 5, here he is, he's still in, he, he adds plus two as well. So we get Get plus five on this roll. So Gordon's feeling pretty good about his chances. Let's give it a go. And wow, okay, so he got a four. He gets five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh, he failed. I mean, everything was in position. Um, you know, John was in position, Gordon was in position, but we rolled terribly. Now that's not good. Now that was it. That's the end of his turn. But if he wanted to, remember how before he picked up this. Um, this, uh, what's it called, uh, per persistence. Now we need this persistence to complete, um, to stop the, the Hood's plot, but if uh, Jen wants to, she could discard this now to get another action and try again, and I think she's going to do it. She is going to discard this thing, and then she's going to roll again. So she's gotten a fourth action. She's being very persistent. She's going to roll much better this time. I'm very, very confident. Oh my gosh! That was even worse! Wow. Okay, so that was two attempts, two fails, because three, oops, it was a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's, um, well, so we failed. And Jen's turn is over. Gordon, you blow. What is wrong with you? He says, well, I'm, a, I'm an aquanaut, not an astronaut, Captain. All right. Oh, sorry, I'm mixing up my 60s sci-fi there. Um, so at the end of Gordon's turn, everything moves forward. We're running out of time. A new one comes out and Talons of the Eagle. This is an air rescue in the Indian Ocean, which really, if we want to do well, we get plus two. If we can get John from out of the satellite and over to the Indian Ocean, we'll get plus two. And if Gordon, who currently is on Mars, could get over to Australia, we'll get plus two more on our attempt. Both of those are going to be difficult to do because they're all in space. All right. So now it is my turn again. I once again have three actions. And interestingly, all of the uh, action is happening in space except for Talons of the Eagle. And this is really kind of a problem because John and Gordon are both in space as well. So I could come over here and attempt to do this, but I'm not going to have much, of a, much good luck. So you know what I'm going to do? Since everybody else is off in space, I have three actions, right? First of all, I end up, and plus I have plus three to add to a sea rescue. And unfortunately, we have space space and air rescues. My first action is I'm going to move. I'm just going to come back here and um, I'm done because you cannot, I mean, I, I could move up to two spaces, but I'm only going to move one. And once you stop moving, then you can do additional stuff. Now, before I do my second action, I am going to transfer myself to Thunderbird, uh, what do you call it? Thunderbird uh, one. All right. So, and that was free. It didn't take an action. So, I've transferred. Now I get to do my second action. My second action is going to be, I am going to, Thunderbird 1 can fly up to three spaces. All I'm only going to fly to, I'm going to fly over here to the Indian Ocean. That was my second action. My third action is, I am going to scout, because you can do the scout action if you're in Thunderbird 1, which I'm in. So I'm going to scout out this Talons of the Eagle thing. And what that means is, because I'm scouting it, I get to take an intelligence and put it on here. Now that means later on when we're attempting, I get one free reroll because of the scouting action I've done. So I could scout a few times, put a few rerolls on here, and that could up my chances of succeeding at this, even though John and Gordon are off gallivanting through the solar system. So that was it. Those are my three actions. I moved, I moved again, and then I scouted. So I'm done. We're going to advance again. We're coming, we're, we're in a bit of trouble now. Oh, oops, actually, hold on a second. Before, what we do is, first of all, before we advance, we draw a card. And in fact, actually, it, did, it wasn't a mission. Instead, this is, this is bad news. Time ticks on. Advance the hood one space on the scheme track, but don't advance any missions. So we got some time. We don't have to worry about these missions because this mission is getting closer and closer to failure. But we don't have to worry about that. But we do have to move the hood up. And boom, he has just done his first nefarious deed. Explosion in the, uh, in the Thunderbird 2 pod bay. Put one pod vehicle from the Thunderbird pod bay, if there is one, back into Brain's notebook. That was lucky because, you'll notice, we don't have anything in Thunderbird Pod Bay. So, this explosion didn't blow anything up. But if we had previously built a Thunder Rise or something like that, it would get blown up now because of some sabotage. But through some sabos. 
Um, but anyway, uh, everything's fine. We get to ignore that. So that was a bit of luck. Um, things have not been going our way so far, but that was kind of lucky. So now the hood is getting closer and closer to completing this. We're getting running out of time, but um, that was it. Now it is Jen's turn, Gordon's turn again, and I mean, he's just got to keep rolling. He's got to finish this thing. So uh, let's just go ahead and start rolling. Come on, because now what do we have to do? We have to beat a 10, which means we have to get a 5 because we have plus um, 3 and plus 2. Now, unfortunately, if he had some courage, he could spend courage to add to his rolls as well. But right now he's going at it with just his plus 5. So we're going to attempt. We have three. He could spend all turn just doing three attempts. I got to roll a 5 total. Come on, give me a 5. All right, that's more like it, folks. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We hit the ten. We have done it. We have completed the Martian rescue. Hooray! So that was our first action. Our reward is we get some technology. And now, Jen could use this technology immediately to build... Basically, you know, this kind of represents she had some kind of brainstorm and she could radio that back to the brain who's hanging out on Tracy Island and then the brain could use that to build something. And, you know, because sometimes we need, although actually none of our missions require us to build the transmitter truck, the elevator car, or any of those things right now. So anyway, so Jen's going to hold on to that because we need it for the hood, to stop the hood. And she also gets to pick one of her choice. Now, she knows I've got ingenuity. She's got technology. Um, let's see. So we also need courage and persistence. Now she's going to be able to get courage on this mineral leader thing. So I think she'll take persistence again. So those are two. That was her first. She gets two more actions now. And we really got to take care of this ricochet thing. So her second action is she's going to move. Um, and you can move up to two space, up to three spaces, but she's only moving two. And so she stopped here in geostationary orbit. And her third action is she is going to attempt to solve the ricochet problem. Um, and she's going to she gets plus two because Scott is in position. Scott is in geostationary orbit, and plus one because Alan is in geostationary orbit. So, although gosh, this is going to be really tough. So that means um, she's got three, so she's got to get a seven. Now, of course, statistically speaking, seven is the most likely thing she's going to roll when rolling two dice. Um, ah, because, you know, she's more likely to get threes and fours and fives and twos and stuff like that. But still, she's got to hit a seven. Um, so this is a, still a bit of a long shot, but fingers crossed. So she attempted, she's moved, and she's attempting again. And if she wants, she could use her persistence to try a fourth time. But we, so we've got to get this done. Now, instead... What could she do instead? Hold on a second. Instead of moving here, she could... Oh, wow. This is interesting. Ah! See, the mineral eaters, if Jen could get... Um, what is it? Alan and John to the asteroid belt, she could just instantly finish this and, just, and get some courage. Just immediately do it. But John is back here. Jen would have to come over here, pick up John, drop somebody else off because there's only three spaces, and then fly back here. So it would take quite a while. That would be a bit wasteful. But you know what? She's going to have to go back there to get John. So she is going to move. She is going to pick... Uh, what the heck? She'll drop off Scott and make room for John. Okay. And, oh, although... Now, here's the deal. Jen could get... The, she, could roll, she could attempt this now, and if she gets a seven, she'll succeed. Otherwise, she'll fail. Now, what she could do instead is... Because remember, you can transfer all you want. Jen could hop on to Thunderbird 5 herself. And then she gets access. Who, whenever you're on Thunderbird 5, you can scan. And that means you can move one mission card back a space. So Jen could take Ricochet and move it back and buy us more time. Um, which means then, you know, if she buys us more time, she could then fly back out to the asteroid belt, finish this thing, and then come back with some courage in hand that will help her beat that. So that's really interesting. So I think Jen's going to do that instead. So her second thing was she flew back, and then she transferred from ship to ship. And then her third thing is she is going to scan and push the ricochet back and buy us a little bit more time. So those are her three actions. Now, she could take a fourth action, but she's not going to. She's just going to... Because she'd rather not use this because we need it to stop the hood, and the hood is getting closer to completion. And now at the end of her turn, we draw a card. Attack of the Alligators in North America. 
And now that's actually good because look, it's a sea rescue. And we've got an underwater sealing unit that will help us out hugely with that attack of the alligators. And now it is my turn again. I'm in the Indian Ocean. I could do some more intel before I attempt to do this all by myself. Instead, I could fly over to North America, which I'd be, I, you know, look, I'm, I, I, it's a sea rescue. I get plus two because it's me. Um, if I were in Thunderbird 4, I'd get even more, but I'm not because Thunderbird 4 is in South um, in um, the South Pacific, not North America, but I also have my plus three. So it's my turn again, and I've got a lot of options. But you know what? If you want to see what I'm going to do and see us follow along, and hopefully I'll play at least to, you know, preventing this first thing and revealing the second thing. We'll see how far I go. You can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes, go to the extended playthrough, or alternatively, you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.